I remember um, circulating that film among my friends, and most people thought it was great and would mention immigration. Mm. But that was a deliberate strategy, wasn't it? Um, it was, and not just a strategy, because I, I don't mind immigration. I think immigration is really jolly. And yes, I that's, think that's your liberal pinko bit coming in. Everyone should go anywhere they bloody well like, anywhere they want. The immigration thing leads us into a number of key areas. One, it's a stick to beat the working class, because a lot of liberal uh, types, you know, the Emily Thornberrys of this world who point at England flags and things, they say, oh, yeah, the trouble is, there was a lot of bigoted working class people who took us out of Europe, and it's just because they don't like foreigners. That is how the concerns about immigration were portrayed by that class. That, is, that is certainly true. And if you look closely, just take apart those concerns about immigration, what do we find? First of all, they say, uh, they, uh, uh, ordinary people think it'll, drive wa uh, it'll take their jobs away. They think it will drive wages down. And they think the system won't be able to cope because there'll be too many. We'll get to the cultural reasons after, but those are the three economic ones. If you look at those, the idea that it's going to take jobs away, that is a very leftist idea. The left trade union um, uh, mentality holds that there are so, only so many numbers of jobs. That's because they think of jobs as being planned um, and being regulated and governed either by the trade unions or by government. This is an absolute fiction if there were just a limited number of jobs, a, a set number of jobs as relating to the population, the world would not look as it does. I mean, there used to be only 50,000 people in New York. There are now 7 million. There are not everyone over 50,000 unemployed in New York. People, there are not jobs. A job isn't a thing. It's a relationship between individuals. And it, is, it, it doesn't mean that when you have more people, you have, few, uh, you know, a, a vast numbers of unemployment. It's a fiction. The second thing is that it will push wages down it's certainly true if you're a plumber and you've got a Romanian plumber coming in and charging less, then you're likely to feel the pressure of um, a, a wage. But if you keep your uh, plumbing charges high, it's fine for the plumbers, but not so fine if you're a little old lady whose uh, boiler is bust. Um, all through um, uh, human history, people are trying to limit people coming into their professions in order to keep the prices of their wages and their incomes high, and it is to the detriment of the customers. So it might be fine and dandy for plumbers, not so good if you need a plumber. Um, the third, it does not, in other words, it not, doesn't do us all good, it just does specific protected groups good. The third thing is that, um, uh, again, that's another bit of trade unionism. They are the ones, they are the protectionists who want to keep the wages of their members high to the detriment of the rest of society. It's a left-wing prejudice, that. The third thing is about services and, you know, the system can't cope. And the difficulty is, if the state decides to take it upon itself, again, this is an act of socialism, to run so many aspects of our lives, health, housing, education, and so on, queues form. We know that happens. Socialism leads to queues. Right. And as soon as you have queues, you have, if you've got um, an ordinary person worried about whether their daughter is going to get a council house and someone comes in and gets in the queue above them, they will feel utterly resentful. If they see people getting welfare that haven't paid into the system, they will feel resentful. But it's a bit like in the Soviet Union, in being in a queue for bread, and instead of blaming the socialist planning system that's led to all these queues, blaming the other people in the queue. Frankly, they should be blaming the fact that the state is providing all these services. Private companies never bother about there being too many people. Tesco never worries about there being too many people who want stuff from Tesco. Odeon cinemas never worry about there being too... On, on the contrary, they chase them down. The, the, the private enterprise loves people, loves customers. That's not a problem. In other words, all of those economic concerns about em immigration, they're certainly not racism. They're based on false prejudices by and large, but false prejudices that have been generated by socialist politics over the years. That concern about immigration is not racism, it's bad Keynesian economics. And, and it's not surprising that ordinary people have those prejudices because they've been spoon-fed them from the trade union movement, from the labour movement, from, through Naomi Klein, who says the, poor, the problem is poor people who are prepared to work for less in foreign countries where Nike are building their, their, their factories. Those are the, the, that, these are the leftist prejudices that have been fed to poor people year after year after year. The trade unions were the first ones who complained about immigration in the 50s and the 60s. Then we have Gordon Brown saying British jobs for British workers. Left prejudices have led, led to people having these ideas about immigration. The final thing I'd say is the cultural thing. On, on, on Islam, because obviously it's, you shouldn't conflate the two. There are genuine concerns about ordinary people about Islam. Now, 
The left can say, oh, what a bunch of bigots they are. But I mean, think of it. The left have been saying for years, quite rightly, that, you know what, gay people, they're not so bad after all. In fact, they're perfectly fine and, you know, we should be bloody supportive of them. Quite right too. And the left, credit where it's due, have said, you know, women, they're bloody, you know, stop imagining that they should be in the kitchen and all that sort of thing. So what happens? We Islam rears its head and enters into our consciousness, and we see them stoning women to death, having been sort of planted in the ground. We see them throw, pushing gay men blindfolded off the tops of buildings. And what do you know? People think that you know it's not quite the thing, and sort of think quite re reasonably, in my point of view, this is not nice. We do not like this. We feel very uncomfortable about this. As soon as that is expressed, you get it in the neck. So I think that it's important to scratch the surface on immigration because I think there's an awful lot of bollocks talked about that and it's not true that people who are concerned about immigration are racist. Sorry, I went on a bit long. No, there. Martin, do you know what? I wasn't expecting that answer at all because it was just uh, I was going to move on swiftly to explain to you why I like the fact that the film didn't mention immigration, which I'll come to in a moment. But... Even though I'd say I'm probably to the right of you on, on immigration, I think that is probably the most articulate and persuasive case for pretty much unlimited immigration I've heard. So In America, so when they, they had it, do you know what the, the quid pro quo was? No welfare. They said, OK, anyone can come, but you're jolly well on your own. Yeah. And yeah. that is what... Because um, I realise you can't simply open borders everywhere because it will be distorted, not least by welfare and state provision of services. 